So Pastor John MacArthur has a new book coming out. However, we're now receiving news that the original publisher had dropped the pastor. And the reason for it is very interesting. It's something that many of you probably know about already. So what is John MacArthur and Grace to you saying about this? The fact that now he's been dropped? Well, we're going to get into all of it here in just a second. Welcome, everybody, to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you and reminding you, as always, that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story about how I went blind and how I operate my entire ministry without being able to see? I made a video that explains it all. You can find a link to that in the description section of all my videos. Or if God puts it on your heart to do so, consider making a generous donation to support my ministry. A few different ways you could do that. One easy way, click the super thanks button on the YT video to make a contribution that way. Or join my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash not by sight news. Link in the description. Joining Patreon, you get all the videos before they ever hit the main YT platform. You'll also get some exclusive links to these topics that we discuss. Some that have to go up on Patreon for obvious reasons. But while you're there, you can comment censorship-free on all videos, and you can even send me DMs. So check it out again. It's patreon.com slash news. Link in the description. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. It was back in 2022 that John MacArthur had apparently had a deal worked out with a publisher for the release of his brand new book, The War on children. In fact, uh, you can still find the original post on Google Books that talks about the fact that Thomas Nelson was going to be the publisher that was going to be putting out the new MacArthur book. However, news coming out now, now this is courtesy of MacArthur's own ministry, Grace to You, or GTY, as some refer it, from one of their employees by the name of Morgan. Now, Morgan did not give out their last name, but they were reached for comment on this and they confirmed the fact that MacArthur's book was dropped. You know, the original plans from Thomas Nelson to release the book, they were they were dropped. Now, what they're doing instead is the book is going to be published by the MacArthur, the new MacArthur Publishing Group. And this is the first time that a book is going to be released under that name. But again, you can find the original posting from Google Books that said that Thomas Nelson was going to do it. So the question is, why did they drop MacArthur? They had an agreement but apparently already made prior. Here's the deal. John MacArthur, now this is again not a this is this is not going to be a big shock to many of you that already knew about this. But this was right around the same time that MacArthur had worked out the deal for the new book. And again, it's called The War on Children, right? The story came out that John MacArthur the whole deal with Eileen Gray and excommunicating her from Grace Community Church over the fact that she would not go back to her husband after being entangled in all sorts of inappropriate behavior, especially involving their own kids and her as well. What did MacArthur and other elders at Grace tell Eileen to do? Go back to your husband. Despite everything that he did to you, Despite everything that he did to your kids, you need to go back to him. Well, Eileen refused to do so. And we know that her husband was eventually arrested and he's still serving prison time right now. And thankfully so. But even, you know, after that, we know that MacArthur had been singing the praises of Eileen's husband even after the fact. And Eileen is not the first and not, I should say, not the only woman uh, to have experienced this type of mistreatment from John MacArthur and the elders there who were basically always in the camp um, of these uh, these shady individuals that would do these things to their families. And I, I'm, I'm not using other words for obvious reasons, and I think you can understand why. So when that story dropped, and again, you had the title of the book, the, you know, The War on Children, who in their right mind would want to publish the book of an individual who did everything in their power to make sure that they did not protect the vulnerable. The mistreatment here of these little ones. And MacArthur had the nerve to write a book talking about what we need to do 
to protect these kids today. I mean, look at everything that's happening in our culture. And look, and that's true. There are a lot of bad things that are going on. It is a, it is a hard time in this world right now to be a kid. But where was the concern from MacArthur and other elders when they had members of their congregation come to them with concerns about what these husbands were doing to the kids behind the scenes? Didn't seem to really have any, right? So you come out with a book like this and I'm not at all surprised that they were dropped by the publisher. Now, another statement that Grace to you made in this was that well, it was due to a, a multitude of different factors. It wasn't just that, but the fact that, you know, John talks about many controversial topics in the book that, you know, really wasn't attractive to a lot of publishers to want to actually be a part of the project. Okay, even if that was the case, I just take a look at, you know, the fact that MacArthur enabled so many of these men to do what they did and just treated the, the, the wives and the kids just like, I, I mean, just discarded them as if they were as if they were nothing. I mean, you even had former members that had reached out to MacArthur over the years and had emailed him and, you know, basically had begged him to disassociate from other pastors that were still engaging in the same type of behavior. And he would tell them, I, I can't believe that you're still obsessing over this. You, you, you haven't gotten over this yet. Look, nobody should have to put up with that type of mistreatment in the marriage, you know, especially when it comes to the kids, nobody, you are not required to have to put up with that. And people like MacArthur and his other elders and pastors on board there, they really took advantage of their position. They twisted scripture as a means to, you know, tell these wives that, no, you got to stay with them anyway. It doesn't matter what they do to you. It doesn't matter what they do to your kids. It's absolutely disgusting. Does John MacArthur take some solid stances on some other biblical principles? Yeah, he does. But does that mean that he deserves a pass for all of this? Absolutely not. There are a lot of people, I have seen it, trust me, they worship the ground that John MacArthur walks on. You cannot say one bit of criticism against their hero pastor, because if you do, they will come after you. They are obsessed with the idol worship of man. And it is absolutely sickening to see it on display. That people like him can get a pass for all of that stuff. Because, oh, he teaches biblical marriage. Or he stands for this, these principles that are true. But what about all the other things that he does that are not right? Like the Eileen, Greece, the Eileen Gray situation and so many others as well put a book out like this, talk about being hypocritical. I just can't get behind that at all. And I don't endorse any man. There's people that get upset at me. Oh, how dare you say this about this guy? Look, at the end of the day, the only person that I endorse is Jesus. Because all these men are fallen, right? And not that there's good pastors out there, because there are. And, and you know, you don't hear about them because they're not doing anything that they shouldn't be doing. They're preaching the gospel in their churches. They're staying quiet. They don't have a spotlight on them because they don't want it. The only thing that they're concerned about is winning souls. It's preaching the uncompromised word of God. You'll never hear about them. You'll probably meet them in heaven one day. And maybe they're from a small rural town that, you know, it pastors a church of maybe 20 to 30 people. Maybe there's amazing, and in fact, there probably is amazing things happening in small churches like that. They're never going to make the news cycle. These aren't pastors that are taking advantage of their positions of power and, you know, and their authority and everything else like that. No, they're actually individuals that truly care and want to do the work of the Lord. They're still out there. <laughs> Again, they don't get much attention, but they're still there. But this whole MacArthur situation, him look, losing the book deal, I don't feel sorry for him. Yeah, is the book going to come out anyway? Yeah, it is. Uh, but look, I, I say this all the time. All of these pastors are going to have to go before the Lord one day. You know, if you call yourself, you know, whatever your title is, you know, pastor, teacher, evangelist, minister, you're held to a higher standard. And there will be a harsher judgment that comes with that. That's why the Bible speaks about how not every, not every one of you are going to want to become teachers because look, there, that comes with a higher responsibility. So you better be careful. And that goes for John MacArthur. That goes for many others as well. So 
I want to hear from you. You guys can let me know more about your thoughts on this. Um, I will have more on the McCarthy situation. I'm going to include the link over on my Patreon just because of the uh, the nature of what's being discussed here. It's going to be a better fit over there. I don't want to include it here on YT for obvious reasons. So uh, you can check that out again at patreon.com slash notbysightnews. If you're already a member, then great. You already got access to this before the video even hit, hit YT. Uh, if not, you guys should sign up. You bless this ministry too for as little as five bucks a month when you contribute um, and you get the, you know, the other access like to these, you know, these links and the videos come up first. You don't have to wait for them to go out on YT. So yeah, you get everything before the main YT bunch does. Uh, what I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, and that's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. Really what this is, is an altar call. And I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I talk about in the church and exposing the wolves and the false prophets, we always want to point people to Jesus because we are in the last days. A Christ is coming soon. And, you know, this world is in turmoil. People are looking for answers in all the wrong places, and we're trying to get them to look towards Christ. So for anybody watching right now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing that you want to do right off the top, acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. As he died and rose again for you and me, he paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin which means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord and you ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. And the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Don't forget, the links to donate to the ministry are there as well. Join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash notbysightnews, or just hit the super thanks button on the YT video where you can make your contribution that way. It's all a great blessing. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.